Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Um, wow, man. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that eclipse was a whopper. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Brooklyn. It's like mid-70s, cool, sunny, breezy. I wish that I could be doing this outside. I wish that the internet connection that I have was um, was strong enough to let me sit outside and do this. But also because I'm in Brooklyn and my neighborhood is pretty rowdy, it would just be annoying because there would be so much noise in the background. But I digress. This is like my, I'm out of here in two days. I can't believe it that I'm Friday, I'm flying out. Um, and you know, I know that it's a really interesting time right now for so many of us energetically. There's so much happening and yet at the same time it feels like we're sort of in this stillness period. We're sort of feel, I mean, I myself feel like there's this, this um, sense of being suspended right now. You know, I know a lot of people are feeling disappointed. I always feel a sense after any big event that is hyped, you know, whether it's a celestial event or a certain date that the spiritual community, you know, attaches a lot of meaning to or a period of time or whatever it is. Um, you know, I, I oftentimes feel afterwards there's this sort of sense of collective disappointment or letdown. I know a lot of us are feeling overwhelmed. I know a lot of us are feeling like we don't know which end is up. I'm going to cover all of this and more in my August Energy Update um, for 2017, the post-eclipse integration, which I also was going to call the post-eclipse like energy digestion because it does feel like right now we're really full energetically and our body is still trying to figure out what to do with all of this stuff. And before we jump in, though, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that participated in the Eclipse Portal Activation. Man, that was some powerful stuff. I have the replay posted on my Facebook and my YouTube and also on my website. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to participate in the energy work, I highly recommend it because that was some juicy stuff. That was amazing. Um, also, I have started doing private clients again. I have um, opened up my calendar. I am, uh, have limited availability. I'm taking clients on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays for the time being. I am currently only doing energy work sessions. So if you go to andrewmartin.energy slash sessions just click on that sessions tab and you'll see the description of what it is that I offer through these energy work sessions um, and you can access my calendar by the book now button or if you know that you want to work with me and you don't need a description or an understanding you can just go um, straight to on my Facebook page um, there is a button on the cover that says book now that will take you directly to my calendar um, also I'm going to be in Los Angeles at the House of Intuition September 21st and 22nd Thursday the 21st I'm going to be taking clients private sessions healing sessions there at the House of Intuition this is the location that's on Sunset Set. And then Friday the 22nd from 7 to 9 p.m. We are going to be doing a live autumn equinox portal activation. So it's going to be two hours intuitive insight, live discussion, question and answer, and then some energy work to really open up that portal for the autumn equinox and anchor in those powerful energies. So lots of exciting stuff going on. But let's jump into the video for the energy update. You know, I've been sitting, first of all, you know, that was a whopper, you know, energetically what we experienced around the eclipse um, and really those two eclipses that we've had in August, the one at the beginning of the month, um, the lunar eclipse and then the solar eclipse just a couple of days ago. It's some powerful stuff. So if you are feeling, um, uh, yes, Stacy, the energy is always good. Energy doesn't go away. So you can plug into it next year if you want and it'll still work. Um, the sense that I've been getting the past couple of days is that there's this collective kind of feeling suspended. There's this sense of, you know, a lot of us feeling disappointed, a lot of us feeling like, but I didn't have this thing happen, or I thought this was going to happen, or I didn't have this magical experience, or I wasn't raptured, or I didn't start, you know, seeing orbs in the sky. What You know, I know that we all, especially from a spiritual perspective, oftentimes expect these big spectacular shifts in our awareness. And some of us very well may have had those shifts. But consider that the desire or the requirement for an external experience is just an overlay of the ego's perception of a energetic or a non-physical experience. 
It doesn't matter what you saw or didn't see. It doesn't matter what you did or didn't experience. It doesn't matter what you, you know, what happened versus what you thought was going to happen. You know, expectation around these events oftentimes creates a very negative perception of it or this perception of somehow we failed or I didn't get what everyone else got or why did she get this and he didn't or I didn't get that and they did. Right now where we are is in this period of integration and it's really paramount right now to our experience that we just let ourselves be. Just let yourself sit with wherever you are. Energetically right now, it's almost like we just ate. I mean, the, the image that I was getting this morning when I was meditating was it's kind of like after Thanksgiving. You know, if you celebrate Thanksgiving or if you have, um, you know, a big event where it's a big meal and you just really eat a lot or you overeat or you just consume excessively. What happens after that is the body is just saying, kind of shutting it down and saying, okay, I need to digest this. <laughs> you just, you just in, in consumed and ingested a lot of stuff. So right now may not be the time for action and that's okay. You know, I have been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, ever since the end of June, beginning of July, that really from July towards the end of the year is just one big massive wall of energy. I've been calling this the energy supercell. And especially from the eclipse a couple of days ago through the equinox in the, 20, uh, the 21st in September, that's a month of really, really powerful energy. These eclipse energies have only just begun to really work their way through our experience. And a lot of the celestial alignments that occurred around the eclipse and that are shifting over the next couple of weeks are going to be carrying us through the next like 18 to 24 months. So this is not a one and done. You know, the mind always wants the big pop, the big experience, the big explosion, the big, you know, light show. And then it thinks, okay, well, what's next? Now we're moving on. No, there is still a lot of integrating. There is still a lot of shifting. There's still a lot of massive changes that are going to continue to occur from now to the end of the year. So let yourself go from this idea that you did or didn't achieve what you thought you were going to achieve and let yourself go. Be free of these expectations of what you thought the eclipse was going to do. Because again, that is an ego-based perspective that something outside of me is going to come and do something to me. That something outside of me is going to come and save me or rescue me or shift me or upgrade me. That's not how it works. These, op these energetic experiences, the celestial alignments, these points along the infinite eternal path are merely opportunities for us to see what has been revealed within ourselves. It is only ever our work to, it is only ever our willingness to be present within our experience and to do whatever we are called to do and to do the work that allows us to reach these new levels of awareness. And it's not an exclusive thing. It's not like a secret club that only a few people get to join. This is about your experience as you move up the infinite spiral of your, ex of your, um, of your existence and just allowing yourself to be present where you are. Trusting that as these insights and these awakenings and these levels of awareness and these inspirations and these epiphanies open up within you, that you will find what is next when it's time for what is next to reveal itself. But let yourself be where you are. Let yourself digest that massive energetic meal that we just consumed and that we are going to continue to kind of chew on. You know, it's like I just, this Thanksgiving analogy is so perfect. And for those of you that don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I'm not trying to be, you know, Americanist about this. But, you know, it's like when you have a really big meal and you eat all this food and then you're kind of, huh. But then you go back and you nibble. And then you go back and you have another plate. And then you go back and you have some leftovers. These massive eclipse energies that came in, they are here. They have landed and they are present within our experience. And now as we individually allow ourselves to integrate and to release and continue to expand and move up the ladder of our experience, they are here to support us. 
to give you another analogy, in many ways, it's like we just moved into a new house and we've got all of our boxes are still in, you know, everything's still in boxes. We're not sure what's going to go where. Maybe we're just sleeping on a mattress in the middle of the floor because we haven't even set up the bed yet. We're still, you know, it's like I got one towel on the back of the bathroom door so I can take a shower. My clothes are still in suitcases. Maybe I have a few things hung up. Right now is not necessarily the time to figure out where everything goes. Just let yourself be present. Let yourself get used to this new environment. These eclipse energies, this threshold that we have crossed, just because things don't look like you thought they would doesn't mean that the change has not happened. Are you with me on that? Just because what the mind expected to see is not there doesn't mean that the shift has not occurred. I don't know how many times I need to say this, but this is not a thinking game. This is a feeling game. This is a knowing game. This is an intuitive thing. This is a non-physical experience that we are sensing and beginning to integrate and understand. But just let yourself be where you are. Just trust that you, because again, this is between you and you. This is your greater self calling you forward. This is the field of infinite potential that you are from continuing to expose itself and reveal itself in all of its possibility and potential. And there are some practical things that we can do to allow ourselves to begin to orient ourselves to this new landscape and begin to figure out how to navigate at this new house, kind of figuring out, well, where do I want that to go? Where do I want that to go? Do I even want my old furniture? Maybe, you know, if you're anything like me, I don't even have any new furniture. I don't even have any furniture in this new house. I literally, and literally that's what I'm doing in the process of moving again. You know, I shipped three boxes to my mom. So now I have, I think like 10 boxes total in storage. I've got two suitcases and a duffel bag and that's what I'm leaving with. So whenever I land in San Francisco, wherever I land in San Francisco, my goal is October 1st. But if it's not October 1st, it's not October 1st. I'm going to literally be moving into an empty apartment or maybe a share with somebody else or maybe an empty bedroom. But the point is, maybe you're in this new house and you don't even have any of your old furniture. You haven't even figured out what kind of furniture you want yet. You don't even know what your tastes are because what you used to like isn't what you like anymore. That's okay. Let yourself trust the process. Just be where you are. So in many ways, the best thing that we can do right now is really be sure that we are taking the time to be present within this new experience. And even if that is only five minutes a day, maybe you're new to this whole game of allowing yourself to be present. Maybe you're new to this idea of accessing stillness and just being present. Because the infinite awareness that you are the infinite awareness that is always being projected through your human experience, it's always been there. It's just sometimes we are so distracted with the noise of the mind or the external world. We're so distracted by what the mind thought we were going to experience on this magical eclipse day that didn't happen. So now I'm upset or I'm frustrated or I'm angry or I'm feeling slighted or I'm feeling like I missed out. That's noise. That's noise. That's noise. How can you possibly learn how to inhabit your new house if you're constantly walking around the new house talking about and being upset about how it doesn't look like the old house? So, find some time every single day. And I can hear you saying, but Andrew, I'm busy, but Andrew, I don't care. Wake up early. I don't care. Turn off the TV five minutes earlier before you go to bed and just sit. I don't care, you know, if you got an hour lunch break, take 50 minutes and then the, the last 10 minutes, go sit in your car, go sit in the park, go sit in the stall in the bathroom at work and just be present with what is going on right here. Allow yourself to feel this energy, this current that is running underneath everything, this current that is really here to, you know, start us moving in this new direction when it's time. This current that is here to reveal the highest expression to us. But we got to do our part to take a second to tune into it. We are remembering how to speak this language. We are remembering how to be in our native experience. And I'm not talking about as a human. I'm talking about the experience that we are natives of 
is the field of infinite, infinite potential, is the source, is the infinite spark. We, we came from that field of infinite potential and decided to individuate ourselves as a human in this experience. But the beautiful thing is, is that we took that field of infinite potential and we carry it within us. So that spark of home is always in us. That truth is already here, but you can't hear it if you're not allowing yourself to be still and be quiet. Now, a very interesting thing is happening for many of us is that we up into the eclipse, we may have had all of these visions and all of these insights and all of these ideas. And then the eclipse happened and bam, now we're just like laid out with maybe physical, like I, I'm telling, I took three naps yesterday. <laughs> I am not, I woke up at like six o'clock. I was wide awake. My whole body was buzzing. Literally the, the, the frequencies in my ears were ringing so loudly they woke me up and my body was buzzing head to toe. I was up at like six o'clock. I did a little bit of work and I took a nap at 9.30. I went back to bed at 9.30 in the morning. I did a little bit of stuff. I ran a couple of errands. I came back and I took another nap. I got up and I packed some stuff and I got some things together for flying out Friday morning and then I took another nap. So the body right now may have very specific requirements that feel unusual. Just trust that. Just trust it. So we are remembering what is it like to be in the state of knowing. And so we have these visions, we have these ideas, we have these goals, we have these dreams, and then the eclipse happened and bam, all of a sudden we're like laid out again. Those visions haven't gone anywhere. They're still here and they will continue. When it is time to act, trust that you will know it is time. Don't get so caught up in trying to make it be anything. At this point, trying to get an active plan together of A, B, and C is a waste of time. Because that is just the mind trying to take this new, previously unexperienced in this form energy. Like we have never been in this place before in human form. So the mind is trying to make sense of a language it doesn't even know how to speak. So let yourself be present in your experience. So here are practical things that you can do in the meantime, because we're also in Mercury retrograde right now, which is not meaning that the world is out. Mercury is not out to get you. It has no agenda. It's just here to invite you to go inside and get really, really clear, right? We're in this beautiful process still of clarification and purification and integration. We're still digesting. And as we move towards the equinox, I would, I'm thinking like the first couple of weeks of September, we're really going to feel things start to open up and move forward again. That plan for how we want to decorate the new house, how we want to lay it out is going to start to become clear again. So in the meantime, here are some things that you can do in when you're giving yourself those five minutes. And if you can do more, do more. You know, I've been meditating. Usually it's about 15 to, you know, anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. Sometimes my meditation is not sitting with my eyes closed. Sometimes it's just sitting silently. I don't turn on my phone. I don't turn on my laptop. I sit with my coffee and I just sit and I'm just present and I'm aware of what's going on in here. And I just let itself reveal itself to me. So as you're taking these time, this time to be with yourself and to be still and be quiet and listen, not hear, listen to what's going on in here, begin to ask yourself these questions. Who am I without my struggle? Who am I without my old stories? Who am I without my old beliefs, my old patterns, my old relationships, my old job? Or who am I without my current situation? Maybe the current situation is one that you were really hoping would shift through this eclipse. It could still very well be in process of shifting, but to begin to ask yourself, okay, but who am I now? What do I want now? This is a beautiful time to be resetting intentions. And there's a couple of ways you can go about setting your intentions. The first one is to do it through a feeling energetic place. You know, some of the intentions, I'm gonna read some of the ones that I wrote the other day. Hang on, I'm gonna get my laptop fired up here. So the other day I was sitting down and I was setting some intentions. Um, and I had, you know, the first day, I think I did them before, there we go. Is that it? Yes. So before the eclipse um, or the day of the eclipse, I sat down and I wrote some intentions of what I want for the next six months, because this is the other thing. These energies now, they're always new. 
They're all, you know, the eternal now is all there ever is. You know, the construct of linear time has always been false, but even now more than ever, we're beginning to see how it's really falling apart. Because when we're in the present moment, we will always know exactly where to be. And sometimes where to be calls us into action. And sometimes that being and that action is an internal one where it's just saying, just sit and be still, just hang out, just chill, just nap, just, you know, take salt baths, get massages, get energy work, just be present, do self-care. And sometimes that insight that we receive when we're being is forward action and external choices. But some of the things that I wrote in the next six months, one of my intentions is find deeper satisfaction and greater levels, levels of joy in all aspects of my life. That's a beautiful big picture plan that allows a whole lot of things to open up. One of the other ones was um, build community and create heart, more heart-centered connections. Revel in the simple, pure, true joys of life in the infinite flow. You're in the flow all the time. People ask me, how do, how do I find the flow? How, what about you? Girl, you are the flow. You're in the flow. It's just a matter of which, are you trying to flow upstream? Are you going down the up escalator? Or are you flowing with what is moving through you? Another one I wrote was expanding my circle of collaborators, co-creators, and dream builders. So you can let yourself have these big picture, energetic, very, and dream as big as you want. I would challenge you to dream so big that it feels ridiculous. Let some of the dreams and the intentions that you write down on paper just feel absolutely absurd. Allow yourself to continue to move beyond what the mind has thought was possible because we are moving now into territory that is completely uncharted. Completely, we have no frame of reference for this from a mental perspective. So those were some of the things that I wrote from a feeling perspective. And then after that, I thought, you know, after the eclipse, I started to feel like, okay, I love those emotional, energetic ideas and goals and intentions because what they do is they open me up to possibility. When I say find deeper satisfaction and greater levels of joy in all aspects of my life, think about how big that is. Think about the possibilities that exist just within that container of an intention. So over the next couple of weeks, just allow yourself to move into these big picture dreams and these big picture intentions of, wow, yeah, and it doesn't have to have an action step yet. You don't need the plan. You are the plan. And again, not needing the plan doesn't mean it's not going to ever be action. And there at some point, a plan will, will emerge and begin to form before you. But in the beginning, it's not about a plan because a plan only limits you. If I say, I only want a blue car and a red house and a pink boyfriend, that's very specific. I have really limited what is possible. So allow yourself to go big. And then once you've sat with these very general energetic feeling place intentions, then you can get a little bit more specific. Like some of the things that I wrote were a management PR team for myself and all of my projects. A support staff to run my business. You know, I'm ready for a manager. I'm ready for an assistant. I'm ready for an intern. I'm ready for a social media guru. I'm ready for all of these things to come in. And when I put them on the list of the things that I require, here's the other thing. We are sovereign beings. So we get to call the shots. But when you are in a brainstorming creative session and you're creating a list of things of action for your team to take, it always starts big. It always starts intentional, right? When you're sitting down to create a, 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 a project, you always say, my intention is I want to help people or I want to connect with big idea people or I want a project that feels joyful and exciting. I want a project that when I wake up in the morning and I think about it, I am jazzed and I can't wait to get to work. I want a relationship that values me and honors me and allows me to fully be myself. I want to live in a city where I wake up and I breathe a sigh of relief because I'm so happy that this is where I live. So ask, start to ask those questions. Then you can start to get a little bit more specific. Then you can start to say, okay, but what would those things look like? If I'm saying that I want to, you know, experience more joy and fulfillment in all areas of my life, 
all right, well, my job is one area of my life, and what would make me feel more joyful right now is to have somebody to help me carry the load of the admin stuff that I just don't like doing. At some point, I want to be able to work with a, you know, a, an art director or a creative director or a brand, you know, someone who helps create brands because I want to take my website and my online presence to a really big place. So allowing yourself to dream from these energetic places is key. You got to feel it first. You got to feel it first. You've got to know what is the vibration that I am resting in. And this goes back to the emotional architecture, which is, I think there's, I think I have that video still on my YouTube channel, the emotional architecture, but this is what it's all about. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what the plan is. If you haven't identified how you want to feel within the experience. So as these energies are integrating, as the massive wallop of energies that came through, through the, came in through the eclipse are continuing to move through our experience and settle in, just be present with them. Allow yourself to orient yourself to what does it even look like in this new world? What is this like? How does it feel? Who am I now? Who am I now? And begin to ask those questions and begin to investigate this new world that you are now a part of. And then begin to rest in these new amended intentions. And I said six months just because that felt right for me, but you can do um, you know, three months, you can do six months, you can do a year, whatever feels right. But I have said this before, the, the key to success I see is to be with the level of intensity and excitement that we hold for these new ideas and these new intentions, we must also hold an equal amount of willingness to surrender them and be shown something greater. When you're moving through that field of infinite potential and working from that place of your, your native self, your sovereign self, man, you really begin to see very, very quickly how limited so many of our ideas have been in the past because we were creating them from here. The heart, the soul, the true self knows no limitation. So show up with your ideas, show up with your intentions, show up with your plans and be just as willing to let them go for something greater, for something bigger, for something more magnificent because this is about co-creation. This is when we're really seeing the co-creative process become so real. And this manifestation becomes so evident. And when we allow ourselves to say, wow, man, I thought this was the biggest dream I could ever have, but that one looks even better. I want that. Allow yourself to say yes to that. So that's the advice I have for us for the next couple of weeks as we move into September. Be kind. Go easy on yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing you missed out on. You, you know, this idea that, oh, I wasn't spiritual enough or I wasn't open enough or I wasn't aligned enough or I wasn't ascended enough or, or whatever, my vibration wasn't high enough. That is a, the best way. The, the best way to lower your vibration is to beat yourself up with this idea that your vibration was not high enough. Man, you will go plummeting back down into self-criticism, misery, feeling sorry for yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. It's never going to happen. It's always them. Look at them. Why not me? No. Just let yourself be. Digest and integrate these energies. Allow yourself to get used to this new space that we've all moved into. Let yourself be present with your experience. It doesn't matter what's happening over there because there is no over there right? What's over there is only ever a reflection of what I've got going on in here. So just be present with that. Do yourself the favor and give yourself those five to 10 minutes a day where you can just sit and be present with all that you are. And just relax. It's infinite. We never, you know, you can't mess it up because it never stops. There is no deadline. There is no finish line. <laughs> just let it go. You are where you are because you chose to be where you are. You are where you are because it holds the greatest value for you. And just be there. And trust that the big dreams and the big ideas that you've had moving up to the eclipse, even though now you're like, I don't even know where they are or how to get there, they're, they're still there. They're just kind of, we're still in this place right now where we get to sort of, you know, root into this new energy and get comfortable and get acclimated. 
before we really move into this next phase. So lighten up on yourself. Go easy. And don't forget to do your energetic maintenance. Ground, meditate, earth, release, salt baths, crystal therapy, Reiki, sound healing, yoga, exercise of whatever way, even if you're just walking around the block, whatever you can do, just be present with it. And just take care of the body because the body is integrating a lot right now. The body is going through a massive integration and digestion process. And it'll show you when it's time. <clears throat> so, that's it, you guys. That's the update for the next couple of weeks. I will put the links for the um, LA workshop and the LA dates in the, the um, description. I'll also put all my info for the newsletters. Um, the, the portal activation is something that I'm gonna continue to do. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do it because Zoom seems to be really choppy and it really worked out well when I was doing it just as a live stream on Facebook. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but I'll, you know, I'll figure it out as we get there. It's all a work in progress. Um, thank you as always for watching. Have a fantastic day. Take care of yourself. Just chill out. Go easy. Everything's fine. And when it's time for an action, you'll know what action to take. That's it. Love you guys. Have a good day. Bye.